all of the insurance companies, all the main providers we use at least have come to the party with some sort of either premium holidays or premium suspensions, uh, deferment of cover, whatnot. Today we've got Matt Page from Financial Design Group, who's joined us to basically talk about the state of the insurance market at the moment. There's been obviously quite a few changes in the market, uh, and so we just want to get an update on what everything looks like. So, g'day Matt, how's it going? Good, thanks Rupert, how are you? And hi everybody. G'day, yeah right, so hey, um, why don't you start by just talking a bit about what the insurance companies, what their reaction's been to the sort of COVID lockdown and things? Yeah, um, well, first of all, I know, as most financial services are, insurance is an essential service. So they're still operating, they're still running as per normal-ish. Um, and that means that most of their staff, I think all of their staff have gone and worked from their houses. So the first couple of days, there was a little bit of slow turnaround times and trying to get a hold of people was hard work. But it seems sort of business as usual now. Um, and their major response was that of let's help our clients because they're the ones who pay the premiums every month, I guess. And they really want to make sure that if there is things like redundancies and if there is things like people losing jobs and businesses that they're there to help. So all of the insurance companies, all the main providers we use at least have come to the party with some sort of either premium holidays or premium suspensions, uh, deferment of cover, whatnot. But they're all very varied as well, and yeah, we could go into detail with every single one of them. But you know, I don't that would make an interesting, <laughs> an interesting interview. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think there's just a sort of a couple. Some some allowing you just to have a break from payments, and some are pushing that payment along, right? Yeah, for sure. Some of them have said you can have a pure premium holiday where you're not paying any premiums, but you're still fully covered, and they're also not requiring you to pay the premiums back after that premium holiday, which mm. is kind of rare and unique. Amazing. Whereas some have said, you can take a break from premiums, but you've also got to pay your premiums back to us when the premium break has stopped. So yeah, like all insurance companies I said before are really varied. We've done a lot of research at our business with our team and sort of figured out who's doing what. So if any client rings who's covered with any company, we're pretty confident we know the answer. And if not, we'll go and find out for them. It kind of is what it is because you wouldn't change insurance companies at the moment just no. to chase that holiday, right? So <laughs> no, that would be uh, silly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, um, pandemic the thing about the pandemic, sort of, you know, a, a, a life is life insurance paying out, or is that an exempt kind of clause? Is it a? Yeah, I mean, life insurance pays out if you get diagnosed as terminally ill or you are dead. So the insurance companies are more looking at what is a pre-existing condition when they're insuring somebody. So of course in New Zealand, I guess, in most places around the world a year ago or six months ago, there was no such thing as COVID-19. Mm. So therefore it wouldn't be an existing condition for most people. Therefore they would cover you if you died from it is mm. our understanding. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're lucky in New Zealand. Um, we've had relatively low numbers. Of course people yeah. have died, but but you think we've just crossed the 60,000 uh, person mark in the US, which is, is significant. That's huge. Like that's, yeah. yeah. And, and you wonder what the outcome of their insurance market will be after that, and especially if a lot of those people were insured for life insurance. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah which hopefully they were. But yeah. 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 Um, okay. Let's talk about income protection, because obviously the, the major effect that, that New Zealand has had as sort of this instability around income and uh, potential redundancies and things. So I know one of the questions you've been getting a lot is, what is the difference between income protection and redundancy cover? Um, yep. so can you sort of give us a gloss over of that? Yeah, um, so income protection insurance, I'll start with that one, is purely your inability to work due to an illness or a disability. So it can be pretty much anything that's a non pre existing condition. So even uh, down to mental health conditions, you know, you've uh, hurt yourself and you can't work, you get a serious illness and can't work. Income protection is designed to pay out when you can't work due to an illness or disability. Redundancy cover is there also, and it's sort of used as most insurance companies, their redundancy cover will be on top of income protection. So you have to have one to get the other. And redundancy cover is designed to give you a brief 
payment term while you're out of work if you've been made redundant to pay the bills and hopefully find another job. Mm. Can you answer that? Yeah, it does totally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and and from what I've seen, you know, not a lot of people take up took up redundancy cover. Um, no. <laughs> because because it's relatively expensive. You know, it's it's hard to measure. How do you measure whether you're going to be made redundant next week? So they've got to cover for the worst case scenario, right? So. Yeah, and I don't know many people who've got a crystal ball. I wish I had one, but uh, yeah, yeah. hopefully you, you sort of go to work thinking, hoping you're not going to be made redundant, but you yeah. never really know. So I think in the 14, 15 years I've been an insurance advisor, I've sold or recommended two people to get redundancy cover in the past. And that was purely due to some circumstances that these clients were going through at the time. And whilst they weren't aware that they would be made redundant, there was that in their mind that it could happen so it's about solving people's problems and putting their mind at ease i guess and yeah we don't see it a lot recommended and it is expensive because you're already having to pay for income protection insurance which isn't cheap mm. but of course what it does is pay you for a long time but it's an extra cost yeah, yeah. And and so I know you've been you've been getting a lot of people asking you, can they take redundancy cover out now? Um, yep. and <laughs> I know look we have the same thing when we have to tell people no you can't because uh because you can't get a mortgage because of something in your life. But this is kind of an external factor, right? The odds of someone being made redundant in the next few months is much higher than normal. Um and so the 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 odds of you know it, they're just not going to give redundancy cover, right? Is that, is that the, in this state? Yeah, um, we hate saying no to people, um, but we're, we're told by the insurance companies that we deal with what the answers are sometimes. And unfortunately, as the coronavirus, COVID-19 pandemic thing started in New Zealand and everyone was told to go and work from home, and businesses were shut down and everyone was you know really struggling, which sucks. The insurance companies, I guess, were looking at wow, there could be a huge influx of people wanting redundancy cover and there could be a huge influx of claims being paid. Yeah. The problem with redundancy cover is the policy wording and the fact that you've almost got to be able to prove that you're not going to be made redundant in the next six months, which is impossible. It's one of those. Yeah. Who can prove yeah. that at this time? And so the insurance companies would probably take a huge gamble if they offered it. So all of the insurance companies within about a week turned around to us and said, sorry, we can't add in uh, redundancy cover onto existing or new policies at the moment. So the short answer, I guess, is no, you can't have it. Yeah. Um, and that kind of sucks for us because, you know, we want to help people and put their mind at ease. But if it's not available, it's not available. Mm. Uh, uh, other insurances still working? So you, I, uh, I could get life insurance and income protection at the moment. That's all. Yeah. Well every, everything's still up for grabs. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're still we're still working, albeit from home and on Zoom and via Skype and the phone and all that sort of stuff, as per most people is. Um, and yeah, we're still talking to new and existing clients about creating more insurance or making sure they're properly covered and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So um, just to, just to finish off, so if someone's lost their job and they're concerned about their insurance premiums, obviously the worst thing they can do is cancel uh, their um, policy. That, that that will be a terrible outcome. So what, what do they do if they've lost their job? Best thing they should do is get in touch with their insurance company or their advisor. And we've even been helping people that aren't our clients, but have just been, you know, talking to their family and friends who are clients of ours. And we're, we're helping people with premium holidays or policy suspensions because you can have a good break where you don't have to pay that bill. Sometimes you're still covered, sometimes you're not. But the worst thing is having to go through the underwriting all the time because things do pop up, as we know. You get older, we get things go wrong with us, we get sick, you know, my shoulders and knees aren't very good anymore. Um, and the worst thing like is, is endless for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know Rupert. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just about making sure that, Hey, look, you've got something in place at the moment. It's fit for a purpose. It was done for a reason. Don't go canceling it because things are getting tough. There are options available to you. So reach out, talk to us if you want, talk to your advisor. I don't care who you talk to, just talk to somebody and take some advice. And make sure you've still got cover there for when things get back to normal because 
the worst thing you could do is cancel and then have to go through underwriting again mm. and you get all these exclusions or loadings or deferments and sometimes they might not even be able to offer you cover and we don't know what the post covid world looks like regarding insurance policy wordings so my suggestion is definitely stick with what you've got don't be looking at changing or going to a cheaper provider or anything at the moment because there could be some bad exclusions that you get because of this and yeah the best thing to do is talk to that advisor and see, yeah. see what help they can offer you i mean i'm happy to say I mean, obviously our business closed down for six weeks i looked at that form it was a two-page form not hard at all it was not onerous you just had to show that your business had been affected um, and, and so, yeah, I'm really glad that they provided that rather than a 50 page form of tell us everything, you know, so it's, it's not onerous and, and provides some relief for those people who have had a drop in income or loss of it. So really, really good outcome. I think. Cool. Yeah, they were, I think all the insurance companies have been really good in making it simple and they realize that sometimes the loss isn't quantifiable now. It could be three or four months in the future. So, I mean, I've heard of some forms coming back with just saying, there's like and it's not even the person insured we had a client who who the three of them in the household the, there was a mum dad and a daughter all live together they're all adults they're all earning the daughter got made redundant and the dad was self-employed so he couldn't work for you know the time that we were in lockdown she was still able to work the client of mine was still able to work due to the fact that her job was online anyway but the household loss was such that the insurance company gave them a three month premium holiday just because they were able to prove that, you know, it was that and now it's that. Even though it wasn't the insured actually at loss, it was the family at loss. The insurance company was really good in helping that person out. Yeah, it's amazing to hear these, these companies sort of really get on board with the empathetic kind of view of the world at the moment. So it's yeah. quite... All right, hey, thanks, Matt. That's, uh, that's been really cool just to, just to chat briefly. Uh, we'll put your details and all the posts around the social media that we do so um, people can get in touch with you. Thanks for no that. Thanks, guys.